right, so this is a remote location I have. Right now it's strictly running wing bits and nothing else. So now I can take this wing bit station out, put this helium station that used to be here with bit harvest running it. So now it will be a helium spot again and a wing bit station. So now I can take this and the rock pods never worked good on helium, but now I can take this as a wing bit station Put it up at another person's house in another heck somewhere and freeze this device up so two for one on the wing bits device so now i got my green sdr plugged into this uh, sense cap right yeah and have this networked but of course on the bottom floor i forgot my um 915 megahertz layered antenna but of course that's going to come out of this spot on the left i can't point it out because i'm holding the phone and holding this device you know right here so then there'll be two wires coming out of it you're going to have your 1090 right here with that antenna that's going right here and then my helium antenna that's going to go here welcome back to another video i wanted to do a quick video after the one I did yesterday showing the new bit harvest firmware that's being placed on devices and stuff like that. So the question came up as far as remote installs. So you're going to have to visit your remote install to put a SD card in it with the firmware. That's how it will be long term. And even the way they're doing it right now, temporarily, you will have to put you know, Raspberry in it or something like that to do the steps that we went through yesterday. But the question came in is, how will you then, after this is running, be able to access the dashboard? You don't want to keep the port forwards open or anything like that. You definitely want to close your 22 port when the SSH into it. And in the long term, when this is fully up and automatic and running, there will be no more ssh in, into it they won't have to so you want to keep those ports closed so how are you going to access it so in the long term when everything's automatic and they have everything fully operational we discussed in a previous video the pricing plan that they've come out with so for those people like me who are a little tech savvy and i don't need to worry about it i can run my own you know type of remote management you, know, you can do this 1999 for the lifetime device and stuff like that for people who don't want to have to worry about managing it or anything like that, and you allow them to manage it and remote into it and stuff like that, they have these pricing plans that are, that are below. So currently right now, what they're doing is $19.99 for a license. This is only beginning the way that with the manual pushing and stuff like that, and then $15.99 for a premium subscription, which is $36 for the full device. And we discussed this kind of yesterday. But I want to still be able to remote into my TAR 1090 and see what that device is doing when it's at a host location or um, in a remote location or anything like that. I also want to be able to see the dashboard whenever I want. So how are we going to do that? I'm using TailScale. TailScale, TailScale unbelievably is free. For how great this is, you know, I have, I can't even keep up now. I'm probably handling 20, over 20 wing bit stations between me, family, and friends. And instead of having to keep ports open on their routers and stuff like that, I have installed TailScale in every device. When you install TailScale, it will bring up a dashboard. And that dashboard will show every device that you've put on it and it gives it its own specific IP, kind of like you see in this example right here. And you can then use, as you can see, like in this example right here, every device will have its own IP. You can then use that to either SSH into it directly like that, or you can use that to see your dashboard. So one of the, the second device that I had I went out to that location. That was about an hour drive by the time you went there and back. All I did yesterday was put a new SD card in it with the software that I needed to put on it. It was a Helium device. 
and I took that device that also had a wing bits at that location. So I took the wing bits, wing bits device out, as you've seen in this video, and basically just left the helium device in there, put my SDR in it, put a new SD card in it, boom, and I'm done. Notified them, went through all the steps we did yesterday, and now I'm like, well, how am I going to remote into it? So I installed TailScale on it. So now when I go to TailScale, the IP that it gave me, and I type that in there, HTTPS with that IP that TailScale gives, I'm now in my BitHarvest firmware. So now I can do this myself. So they notified me late last night that I had, that they were up. So I had to come to configure and they already had WingBits running. I had to go to Helium. I had to press install Helium. And now both of those devices, or both of those projects or applications are now running on my device. Now I can go to Helium and check that. I can go to WingBits and check that. If I go to WingBits and check my TAR 1090, it pops up the tail scale address. It's already configured and here it is. Takes a tad second, maybe a tad second longer than it normally would, but here we go. And this is the tail scale on my remote device that I have all ports closed for safety reasons and I can get to it through tail scale. And that's how I'm planning on running these devices. And that's how I'm planning on running my devices from BitHarvest. And another thing, because I want to defend myself with my rant I had yesterday when people are complaining about, you know, want to argue with me about DBI and stuff like that. This again is a device 10 to 15 feet off the air. I mean, um, off the ground, probably close to 15, to be honest. And it's only running the 5.5 DBI antenna that I am that I am talking about and I've been talking about. As you can see, since this device has been on the air, because this whole blue line reset when this was installed last night. So it hasn't even been 24 hours yet. And you can see I'm hitting Birmingham, Auburn, in between Panama and Tallahassee. And Birmingham, Alabama is... 317 miles from this device. I don't know how much more you want than that. If you look close right here, you can see I've hit planes in Auburn, Montgomery, Auburn, down here to Dothan, and all up in here. And when you check the mileage for Auburn, you can see that I am 340 miles about 338 miles to Auburn on here. Right here, you can see my blue line it has been somewhere. This is Dothan right here, Panama City. And when you bring this in, I'm on Dothan right now, 300 miles. Panama City is 285 miles. We were actually a little bit past that, but who's we're splitting hairs now. And my point is, I'm receiving that with a 5.5 antenna that we discussed. On the other side, you can see I'm hitting 200 up miles, maybe a little bit more than 200 miles. This is 200 miles here, and anywhere up north, you can still see I'm 250 miles at least. Let's see, that's 235 miles where this plane is. So this is a different station I have. For some reason, daily, this blue line keeps resetting. I don't, or just it, it only captures for some reason what it sees at this time. But as you can see right now, that it's this one also is picking up this is 257 miles this is 226 miles so we're still doing well over 200 miles with this antenna this is a completely different station this is a third different station the station also is has the 1090 antenna as you can see this is the 200 mile mark you can see where it's hit tupelo past montgomery past dolphin again and this one's actually about 10 miles maybe about five miles west of the first station I was giving you measurements for, and you can see it's still doing pretty well. This is 240 miles right here. So for comparative reasons, I'll show y'all what I am getting right now with a helium antenna. This is two friends that I helped set up. They didn't want to pay for the antenna quite yet because this project's not paying. So I gave them two of 
my helium antennas. So here's one. And as you can see, in some spots, it's not even getting 200 miles. This one's actually higher than the other two I showed you. It's getting 98 aircraft. The other one right now is getting 118 with the actual 1090 antenna, 117. So this one, you might say, this, one's, this is a helium antenna. It's actually getting 126 aircraft. But what I want you to know is this is actually on top of a almost 200 foot building in Baton Rouge. So a 200 foot building with a layered helium antenna is getting a little bit over 200 miles, 125. But I can guarantee you if I put a 5.5 on this 200 foot building, that was actually the correct frequency, I bet I would blow this one up. So back to my other one, this one is a little bit higher than the other one I showed you. This is a helium antenna. As you can see in some spots, it's not even getting, and this is in an open area too. But most of, the, most of these places, it's not even hitting 200 miles. So, so this goes back to what I was saying yesterday. Will and helium antenna work? I am proving to you right now, a helium antenna will work. And like I was saying yesterday, if you want to be a bid harvest supporter where you're not paying for the hex, this this will work fine right here. You're not getting as many messages with the other antenna. But if you're just a supporter, you didn't pay for a hex, then you know this this will be fine. That's fine. They can they don't mind this according to them in Discord. But if you're gonna own a hex, it's kind of your responsibility to do the best you can to cover what you need to cover. And when you look at that, this is getting 480 messages a second with 92 aircraft. And this one with the proper antenna is getting almost three times the amount of messages and 30 more aircraft. If you own a hex, this is what you need to be running. I'm not saying this exact antenna, you don't have to buy it from me, but I'm telling you, we've tested these antennas, especially the one that has the wire that's built in underneath it. Um, I'll see if I can post a, a photo of that one. We tried that one too, but I don't like that one just because that's a long wire, thin wire feed line with a lot of loss. And then if something ever happens to it, squirrel or mouse eats it. That whole antenna is ruined now because you can't change out that cord on the bottom. All right, guys. So in closing, I didn't want to make this video too long with it being the weekend, but I did have some people ask me about remoting into this after they get the software on it, me included. I'll admit that I can admit that. Um, and this is what I was kind of reminded. I'm like, oh, I didn't even think about tail scale. I was already using it for my other devices. So look, if y'all are not familiar with bid harvest or still don't know a lot about it, get into this discord. They are very active. The guys from the project are in this discord. We've vetted them. We know who they are. And so it just that makes you more comfortable with it and stuff like that these guys are dedicated and they are you know passionate about this project that they have been working on make sure you're in this discord and follow them on the social media sites and stuff like that and again when the full automated license purchasing and everything i will have a how-to video on that on how to take your helium device or your basic pie that it's running some type of pie os on it and i will show you all from purchasing all the way through the end how to get that done so that'll be a how-to video because i know a lot of y'all like that but get in this discord and hopefully you know we can all do well together so i'll have some more videos coming in later during the week i will also have a live stream going tomorrow of a mardi gras parade down here in south louisiana i ran one today and it didn't do as well, but it was also a very small parade, very small little neighborhood type parade. I wanted to stream it just for fun. Had about six or seven people watch it. So thank you all if any of y'all did watch it. I appreciate that. Tomorrow again, we'll have a live stream um, of a little bit larger parade in one of the communities which usually has some pretty decent crowds and stuff like that. So nothing from downtown New Orleans that I have to worry about, any kind of nudity, topless stuff or anything like that you know, for the kids or anything like that. This is more of a local type parade that won't be as bad. So I'll stream that. 
and I'll have to do it on this page. I wanted to do it on my new YouTube page, but since I don't have enough subscribers yet, YouTube blocked me from that today. So I had to hurry up and change gears and put it on this page. But so we'll see how that goes for tomorrow. But until then, I have a Weather XM station that's supposed to be finally arriving on Monday. So I'll have a video trying to set that up. Then also putting a fraud license on that. Also, I'll do maybe a video on that just to kind of keep the content rolling for anybody who wants to see that. And I also have an old computer that I have been fighting with trying to put Windows 10 on it to put a fraud license on that to do some satellite mining. It had Windows 7 on it. And that's been kind of fighting me a little bit. It's a little slow machine, but it has all the specs that it needs for a fraud license. So I'm going to have that also. I ran my Silencio. If y'all not into Silencio, please, that's an easy project. While I was in the parade today, I had Silencio running and got some pretty good stats for that. I have my Nadix going. So it's, you know, we, 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 we're hitting it. So everybody have a good weekend if y'all don't see any more videos. And if not, um, I'll be back tomorrow with that live stream and everything else like that. Y'all have a good one.